Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Ray, thanks for joining. Um, if you are here, you probably found me by Googling or searching on YouTube for like pet food or what should I feed my pet. Um, and yeah, you found yourself here, which is great because that is what we are going to do today. So today we are going to do wellness and we're gonna do wellness core. Um, I have it written down here. So wellness core with wholesome grains, puppy, deboned chicken, chicken meal, and turkey meal recipe. And so I emailed the company um, to get the exact numbers on the protein, fat, fiber, calcium, and phosphorus. We're gonna use that as we evaluate the food today and so let us pull up that particular food it is a mouthful it is a mouthful some of these foods the names of these foods are like extremely long um, for some for some reason so wellness Let's see if they have it on Amazon. Yeah. And this is not a food that any of my patients have asked me. So I am a general practitioner. I practice 40 hours a week. I see patients and sometimes the reviews on here come from them, but this was one that um, one of the subscribers sent in and you guys are welcome to do that as well. Just leave me a comment, this one. So it's this one right here. Okay, we found it finally. All right, so we're gonna go through this. We're going to assign some fun points to things just because it keeps me on task and at the end, you know, we're gonna know if you stick around what the total score is. There's 10 points total. And I would assume, even though I made this game up, the closer you get to 10, the more perfect the food is. So that's the game we're gonna play today. And we are going to do it on the wellness course. So um, you can see they've got uh, right here on the food, You they're, they got the marketing. The marketing is in full, the marketing is in, in full swing. So for wholesome grains, um, pick the blue bag. For grain free, pick the brown bag. Uh, there is no reason really honestly to do that. The Everything on this right side, which is the grain free, is completely marketing. Um, there is no reason to feed your puppy grain free. Um, and I would assume that the grain free version is probably more expensive um, than the grained version. Um, I'm just going out on a whim there and we can check that at the end, but I'm just assuming that that's the case. My computer's telling me I need to plug in, I need to plug in a battery. Mm, 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 mm. Better do that, one second. Okay, so we had to sacrifice some lighting for battery power and um, so I hope it didn't get too dark in here because you know we're low budget. This is just a low budget, we're a low budget channel and so we already talked about how um, a lot of this you know might be marketing because we've got the grain version here we've got the grain free version here and usually if a company is about marketing and this is just my personal opinion we could probably do some sort of research on this channel because we go into this so much the more money a company seems to put into marketing the less money they seem to put into the nutrition and vice versa the companies that are like big on nutrition and do all this research on nutrition they're like really wimpy on the marketing and so I don't know why that is, but that seems to be the case. But we're gonna find out today if wellness falls into that category. Um, so let's go through the front of the bag. Let's finish up our marketing, you know, pulling out the marketing on the front of the bag. So we already talked about how the grain-free thing is marketing. Um, Protein-rich nutrition. Protein-rich nutrition, those words to me, again, are also marketing because, oh, I'm on the grain-free one. Here we go, back to the right one. Um, high protein. Um, high protein to me um, is is marketing thing because you don't to me what would be ideal on a package like if you were marketing to me specifically I would like to say appropriate protein or the right amount of protein high protein to me just screams excess but they know that people have people in general have this thing with like high protein carnivores they're carnivores dogs are carnivores they're wolves they just need all this high protein so they know that 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 verbiage high protein draw you in when in reality reality they should be focusing on appropriate protein or the right amount of protein or um, you know that kind of the thing and so we're gonna find out if this really is high protein if it is really high protein that's not necessarily a good thing we already talked about the wholesome grains that's another bit of a marketing thing um, deboned chicken chicken meal and turkey meal recipe okay and then they put that on there um, I'm sure that you know they put that on there just to kind of reach out to people as far as you know showing that this is chicken and turkey um, we got a little marketing thing down here no meat byproducts fillers legumes potatoes artificial preservatives or flavors um, Fillers, they put that on there again. That's another tree, you know, key trigger phrase, fillers. And but I'm gonna, you know, let you guys in on a little bit of a secret. Um, what what you think in your mind is a filler is not what the pet food company um, is thinking is a filler. They know what you think 
and they put that on there for that reason, not the real reason. Um, there are actually no pet food companies that have fillers in their food by the legal definition, the definition that they need to fulfill in order to be on this package. In your mind, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking filler is um, you know, corn and all that stuff that you guys hate. Um, things that you don't think provide nutrients to the diet. Um, I have a whole video on corn and maybe you can watch that and it might change your mind, but by definition, corn is not a filler. Um, a filler by definition, which allows them to put this on the package, the package is a good legal document, they have to follow the rules here for the legal verbiage, filler means something that provides no nutrient value. So like to them, a filler would be something like ground up paper towels, or you know something just completely plastic bags, that would be definitionally a filler. None of us think of that. We're thinking, oh, no fillers means no corn, means no this, means no that. That is not true. So if you think about the lowest grade quality food, and I'm not gonna put any names out there, I'm just in your mind, think of what in your mind is the lowest grade, worst, junkiest, bottom shelf food. They could put on that bag no fillers because fillers are things that do not provide any nutrient bio. So for corn, for example, a lot of you guys hate corn, corn is not by definition a filler it provides some nutrient value. So it provides linoleic acid. It provides a protein source. It is not a filler. So a bag of food that has tons of corn in it could still put on there no fillers. It's just a marketing thing. It does not mean what you think it means. It means a legal definition. You'd have to take class after class after class to learn all these things. And the pet food companies know you don't do that. That's why I'm here. I want to point it out to you. I want you guys to be aware of what they're actually saying. If you make decisions and you're aware, I'm fine with that. I just don't like it when they deceive you. So that's, you know, that's the marketing on the front of the package. The front of this package is like one big marketing platform. Um, let's get into the other stuff that is the more important things, the things where we're going to start assigning our points, our arbitrary points that I made up. Um, we're going to go to the Wellness Core website. I think this is going to be the easiest place to see this. So the first thing we're going to look for is the AFCO statement. I think the AFCO statement is the most important. There's two points here. They get a point if it's feeding child and they get a point if it's the, life, the right life stage. And so Wellness Core um, with Wholesome Grains, Puppy Debone Chicken, blah, 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 really long name. Um, is formulated so they don't get a point there to meet the nutritional levels established by AFCO for growth of um, gestation, lactating, and the growth of large um, sized dogs is excluded. And so this is just a regular puppy formula. And so it's really easy to get the point if you're a puppy formula because all life stages is puppy. Um, this is it's just pretty much very hard to not be a puppy formula in my opinion. Usually it goes the other way. If it's an adult, there's a point taken off because it's all life stages. Here we're fine. So they get one point for that. They get um, no points because it's formulated. So formulated means they you know came up with this idea. They put it in a computer. Computer said, yeah, it should be fine. Boom, bag it, sell it, it's out the door. They didn't actually test it to make sure that it did what it said it was going to do. And more importantly, they didn't test it to make sure it wasn't deleterious. So um, you only get one point there on the AFCO statement. Um, let's go to the guaranteed analysis because this is what I thought was really interesting. This is a first company, and I wish I could give them a point for this, but I'm not, um, that when I emailed them and I asked them for exact numbers, not only did they send me the exact numbers for what I asked, which is protein, fat, fiber, calcium, and phosphorus, um, there's five points that you can get here. They sent me the entire list, the entire list. And so I will link that in the description below what they sent me. So if you're interested, you can actually see the breakdown and it's a very nice chart. It has on one side what the AFCO statement recommends and then they've got um, the wellness on ASFED and dry matter basis. And so that's what we're gonna use to calculate. Um, it is important to realize, and this will illustrate it nicely, that um, what is listed in the guaranteed analysis on the package is as fed and you're going to see how that or excuse me it is as fed but it is as fed and it is a minimum and a maximum it is not the exact number and you're going to see how that differs here in a minute so I will pop up the chart here to show you guys so let's go through this let us go through it so first thing we're going to look at is the crude, po crude protein on the guaranteed analysis on the package you can see that it's 36 percent minimum 
Um, and then when you look at the chart that Wellness sent me, you can see that on an ASFED basis, which is what this is, it's actually 38.15. So it is more than what they listed. When you convert that to a dry matter basis, it's actually 41.47. That is a big deal because what we want on a dry matter basis is 22.5. So it is high protein. They are 100% not lying about that. It is so high protein, it is way too much. It is two times the reference range. I am not sure why, and we would have to email the company and find out why they thought that that was a good idea or why their nutritionist, if they even have one, thought that was a good idea, but it is in way excess of the amount of protein that you need. Second parameter here, let's look at, um, is gonna be the fat. And so they're listing the fat as fed as 17%, um, and that's a minimum. It actually is 17.1, so pretty close. On a dry matter basis, that converts out to 18.59. Um, the standard is eight and a half. So again, more than two times more fat than what should you know be fed to a dog, a growing puppy at this particular life stage. And so again, not sure why that you know that is the case. If we go down to calcium, calcium here they are saying um, 2.2. That is the as fed. It is going to be a minimum. Um, that actually ends up being 2.39. So 2.39 on the calcium when it should be no more than. 1.2 so super excess calcium and usually if the calcium is off the phosphorus goes with the calcium and so phosphorus and um, they're saying phosphorus is 1.4 um, in reality it is 1.52 on a dry matter basis and the maximum is one and so off on you know off on everything fiber yeah, let's see four percent let's do fiber usually fiber is is okay fiber four percent um, in a puppy and a kitten, there's there's really not anything on a puppy and a kitten for fiber listed. There's not really a minimum or a maximum, so we're going to be okay on fiber. Uh, so they do get, I guess they get one percent. It's a give me in, in this one. You get one percent for fiber, one point for fiber. So only one point on the guaranteed analysis, and that, in my opinion, is is no bueno. That that is very bad. They did not follow um, what we would want to see for our pets. So they went way out of the standards. They're, they're way excess of all these things. And, and, and more is not better. Um, more can be quite deleterious. And so unfortunately, we can only award one point for fiber. And that's like not even a super important point. All right, moving on. Let's see if we get any points in the feeding guidelines. So we're going to take the, um, the 10 pounds here and we're going to see um, what we should do. Uh, so for a growing dog, you're going to take the resting energy requirement from the chart that I'm going to provide you guys. You can calculate it as well. I've got hopefully some videos soon on how to calculate that. Um, and then you need to multiply it by a, a number that is appropriate to account for the growth of that particular time in the pet's life. So um, there's going to be a multiplier for like three months, four months and less, and there's going to be one for um, a little bit older. So we're going to take the 10 pounds and we are going to pull up our chart. Ten pounds um, needs about 218 calories, and we need to multiply that for up to four months by three. So we're going to do that. So 418 times three. Excuse me, 218 times three. That's 654. So let's see what we have. What is wellness telling us to feed? They're telling us um, three to four months. They're telling us to feed two cups per day. How many calories do we got? Let's find the calories right here. 457. So that's going to be too 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 much. 457 times two is 914. So this is excess. Now, and it, we can't give them the point because it is not it is not correct. It doesn't follow standards. But in all fairness, it really is hard to overfeed a puppy. Um, they're only on the food for a short you know period of time, and they're growing very fast. So it, you know, usually I tell people just follow the package. But you know, for the point system. That I created. I have to follow the rules. They don't get a point for this. So let's let's tally up the points here before we move on to one I really wanted to know, which is is it more expensive on the grain free? But let's just focus here. That's why we have the point system. It just keeps us focused. So they only get one point for the guaranteed analysis because everything was off and it was a complete disaster. Um, they get one point because it was the correct life stage. Um, they get two points on the ingredient list because it is not. 
grain free or raw. And actually, let's look at the ingredient list really quick. Deboned chicken, oatmeal, chicken fat, the blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just the ingredient list. There's not a whole a whole lot there to really be focused on. Every, you know, it, it's in my opinion, as long as it's not grain free or raw, what the ingredients come, where they come from, doesn't you know doesn't much matter. I just want it to 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 match up when it gets down to the guaranteed analysis. Now, if the guaranteed analysis is perfect and you have two foods that have perfect guaranteed analysis and then you want to start getting into the nitty-gritty okay then we can get into the ingredient list um you know to try to differentiate at that point but we're not even getting there with this food so they get their two points because it is not raw and it is not grain free so where are we at we're at four now um they do not get a point for feeding guidelines because it you know it wasn't correct um yeah, that's it. They get four points. Uh, four points isn't good. Four out of ten is forty percent. Um, I don't think that's passing. It's not passing here in the United States. So to me, this is this is not passing. Um, and I want to see if what I was thinking was true. That this company is more about marketing and less about nutrition. And so we've got the wellness core. Let's check the price. So it's eighteen ninety nine for a four pound bag. Uh, that means it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you four dollars and seventy four cents. Let's see what the grain free option is. Let's see if they're going to charge you more for, in my opinion, a less quality food. They're going to charge you more for marketing. Now, let's see. They are going to charge you more for marketing. It's nineteen ninety eight for the same four four pound bag when it's grain free. So they're actually charging you more for a food um, that is, in my opinion, less nutritious because we're starting a puppy off grain free and we're setting them up for heart disease in the future. At least that's the current concern in veterinary medicine right now. So um, they're charging you more because they know you pay more because for whatever reason, grain free in your mind is better when in reality it's not. So wellness, um, let's just sum it up here. Um, wellness for me only gets four points. It gets 40% and that's not very good. Um, I would not recommend this because it really doesn't meet any of the parameters on the guaranteed analysis except for fiber and that's like not even an important one. Um, I mean, I included it on there, but you know, honestly, it's 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 the fiber is not the big thing. The big thing is the calcium, the phosphorus, the protein, the fat. I can even be a little bit, you know, on a puppy, a little bit off, and I'm okay. I did a review earlier of a food that I think is perfectly fine and was just slightly off on the fat. The main things though, it was really off, and so that's not great. Um, it was formulated. It wasn't feeding child. You're gonna go off on this crazy train um, and be way off the standards, at least do feeding trials to know if the food is safe. And so they didn't do that. Um, it was for a puppy. And so life stage was correct. They got a point for that. And the feeding guidelines are off. Now I will say a lot of the feeding guidelines have been off on a lot of these videos. It just don't seem to calculate it properly. Maybe the old wives tales, they try to sell you more is true. Um, but for me, this is not, you know, this is not a food that I would really invest in. Um, if you are feeding this food and it is working for you, um, I would urge you maybe email the company. And, and if you've done this, please let me know in the comments below. Why, why is it that, um, that, that they're so far off? Why are we so far off the standards here? Is there a specific reason? Do you have a nutrition um, expert, a nutritionist, a board certified veterinary nutritionist that can tell us why that is the case? If you do that, please let me know in the comments. Um, I am gonna link a, I, mean, I am gonna link the full nutrient profile that they sent me so you guys can peruse that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like, subscribe, thumbs up, all the fun stuff. Um, it really, it really helps me. I am a, I am my love language is words of affirmation. Like I need to hear this from you guys to fill my love tank. It just keeps me going. So if you liked it, please be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, we will hang out again real soon. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments on what you want me to review next, and we will hang out again. All right, thanks guys. Bye.